The BBC presents Tony Hancock with Moira Lister, Bill Kerr and Sidney James in... Hancock's offer. One of the biggest items in the cost of living today is the general upkeep and repairs of one's place of residence, especially when the house is an old one. Consequently, at Tony Hancock's house, there's enough work to keep 30 full-time laborers in employment. Give us another nail, Bill. <laughs> there you are. 63 nails in that lot. That should hold it. How does it look? Hmm. Very nice. But there must be a better way of putting wallpaper up. <laughs> Why don't you use paste like everybody else? Paste? It's because this paper is too thin. The paste would soak right through it, we... Wouldn't be able to read the headlines. <laughs> now, what else have we got to do? We need a new roof. Nonsense. I put one on last week. <laughs> well, the rain's still coming through. I can't understand it. You wouldn't think rain would get through cardboard that thick. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the same stuff I sold me boots with. <laughs> well, come on, let's get on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the big hole in the dining room wall? Don't you dare mind the hole. I want to spend a quiet evening at home tonight, watching next door's television. <laughs> Come along now, bring your ladder into the front parlor, the ceiling needs doing up. Uh, now, we've got to be careful with this ceiling. I've been expecting it to fall down ever since last Tuesday. Why? That's when the walls collapsed. <laughs> the front door. That must be Moira. Not so hard! Come in, Maura. Pick up the door and close it. Hello, boys. Put your hat and coat on the hall stand, Maura. What hall stand? Has that nail fallen out again? <laughs> I apologize for the mess, Maura. We're doing a few repairs. Oh, not again. Can't the landlord do something about it? I doubt it. He died in 1827. <laughs> well, the place is in a pretty bad condition, isn't it? I'm sure the foundations are shifting. They are not. Well, then why have you had to change this address three times in the last month? <laughs> you used to be just round the corner from me. Now it's one and threepence to telephone you. <laughs> and another thing, why don't you do something about all that long grass? Lots of people round here have got long grass. Yes, but not growing through the floorboard. <laughs> Leave it where it is. I like having me tea on the lawn. <laughs> Let's face it, Tony. It's a waste of time and money trying to repair this place. It should have been pulled down years ago. Hey, Dent, this house is at the end of the street. Well? Pull this one down, the lot go. <laughs> well, they, they might as well. It's leaning over at an angle as it is. I don't know how you managed to stand up straight. What? Six-inch sole on your left boot? You're well away. <laughs> now, why don't you do the sensible thing and move? Well, that's exactly what I intend to do. I have decided to build... My own house. You what? Yes, this place gives me the willies. It's winter and the wet weather's with us and well... Could <laughs> <laughs> have cut one of those W's, I'm sure. <laughs> I know an Englishman's home is his castle, but I'm getting fed up with living in the moat. <laughs> so I'm getting out. I'm going to build my own little house. Oh, that sweet little home in the west. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Tub. You can't build a house just like that. There are a lot of things to be considered. You've got to get plans drawn up by a skilled architect. I'm not bothering with all that nonsense. I've designed it myself. Like that bloke Christopher Waff. Wren. Bad, is dear enough. <laughs> I've got the plans here. There you are. Have a butcher's at that little lot. That's a picture of how it'll look when it's finished. Oh, yeah? And you designed this all by yourself? Well, not exactly. It was my idea to tear it out of the book. <laughs> anyway... That's what my house is going to look like. But, Tony, this is Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I realize that. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you all. I repeat, I'm not an idiot. I realize I can't build it exactly the same as this. Naturally, I'll have to leave a few things out. Such as? Well, them sentry boxes can go for a start. <laughs> Tony, you can't build a place like that. It's got over 500 rooms. We can take in lodgers. <laughs> I've worked it all out, you see. I'll need a few bricks, a couple of sacks of cement, half a yard of sand... Bucket of water, and everybody stand back. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that to build a place like this would cost over a million pounds? I'd have to start saving up, won't I? <laughs> See, I can cut down to six meals a day. and then Oh, Tony. Places. Tony, be sensible. It's a very natural thing to want to build a house of your own. But you must be practical about it. You must build something you can afford. Yeah, put a door in one of the sentry boxes. <laughs> Why don't you settle for something nice and discreet? A little bungalow, perhaps? Oh, yes, that's it. A bungalow. I can just see it. I won't have stairs. I'll, I'll have a lift going right up to the top floor. I'll just... Tony. <laughs> Tony, this may come as a shock to you, but a bungalow has nothing upstairs. Perfect. A house reflecting his own personality. <laughs> now, listen, you Australian layabout. Now, boy, please. What about this bungalow? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Maura. When do we start? Well, you can't start yet. You have to buy the plot of land first. Yes, of course. Must have land. What a pity father had to sell the estate. <laughs> Just thrown in for good measure. <laughs> land. Where can I get some land from? Wait a minute. I know the very guy. Oh, yes, who? Well, just about the finest estate agent in the business, that's who. Oh, no. Not yet. No. Sid James. I might have known it. And how long has he been selling land? Ever since he found out how many people are buried every year. <laughs> well, you can just think of someone else, because Tony's not buying any land from him. No, I am not. Why not? What's Sid ever done to you? Tell me. It would be a pleasure, but the BBC closes down at midnight. <laughs> no, Bill, I can't understand you. You're the only one who doesn't see through him. Yes. Look what he did to me last week. He sold me a hundred silver-plated cigarette holders for 15 quid. Well, that's a lot of money for a packet of pins. <laughs> Listen, you can forget, you can forget all about Sidney James. I think you're being very silly. Sid sells his land cheaper than anybody else in the country. Well, there must be something wrong with it. He's got thousands of acres all up and down the country. Yes, I bet it's that little strip that runs in between the railway lines. <laughs> Tub, the least you can do is go down to his offices and see what he's got to offer. All right. All right. Seeing as I'm desperate for some land, I'll give him one more chance. Look, all you've got to do is beat him at his own game. Me? Of course. Oh, you. Brilliant. Yes. You can do... Why, you've got more brains in your little finger than he's got in a... You're too kind. Look, be more astute than he is. Me, Use more that, astute. that high-powered business uh -huh. brain of yours. Yes, a typhoon or a tycoon. That's it. That's me. <laughs> Good lad. I will. That's it. I'll battle it with figures. Einstein Hancock. Come along. Come in. Now, see here, James. I understand you have X number of acres for sale at Y number of pounds. Well, I want Z number of acres at B number of pounds. I'm prepared to go up to C number of pounds, but the way I see it, if M equals the marginal profit and D equals the discount per annum, then Y over B plus C over X <laughs> minus the square of D plus M would equal the sum of Q plus E over W times the quotient of F plus Y over K. So what does that prove? I don't know, but I'm red hot on the alphabet. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get down to business. What can I do for you? Tony's looking for some land to build a house on. And you've come to me. A very wise decision. I've got some of the finest land that's ever been reclaimed. <laughs> now, whereabouts did you have in mind? Oh, I'm not fussy. What have you got? Well, let's have a look at my maps. Ah, Oh, yes, here we are. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this lot here marked in red, yeah. that's 2,000 pounds an acre. Yes. This here in green, mm -hmm. 1,500 an acre. Yes. This lot here in yellow, oh. 1,250 an acre. How much for this big lot in blue? That? Oh, uh, three and six an acre. I love it. I'll build me house right in the middle of it. Please yourself. But you better leave your bedroom light on. Why? The ships might hit it. <laughs> Have you got anything on the coast, Mr. James? Certainly. This lot marked in red, I showed you. Seventeen acres there, smack on the south coast. You can only have twelve of them, though. Why? The other five fell into the sea. 
Never mind, Chubb. Twelve acres should be enough to build a house on. Of course. And not only have you got the land on top of the cliff, you've also got the beach right down to the sea edge. That's nice. And it's only 2,000 quid an acre. Well, I'll have to get on to be broker about that. Why? I'm broke. Next. <laughs> Never mind, Tony. Don't worry about the money. I'll help you out with a few thousand. Good girl, Maura. Look, we've got to decide just where we're going to build. Oh, yes. And there's one little point I forgot to mention. I always stipulate that any building done on any land sold by me must be done by a building company nominated by me. Yes, that's fair enough. Which building company do you nominate? Mine. <laughs> yours. Yeah. You're going to do all right out of this, aren't you? What is this building company of yours? My card. Why? So you only employ German labor? Do what? Sidney James Jerry Building Limited. <laughs> All right, we won't go into that. Now, let's get down to details. I suggest we build the house on the beach underneath the cliff. It'll shelter it nicely. All right? Sounds oh, fine. Yeah, well, fine. I like that. All right. I can see that, yeah. Now, that should provide you with a very comfortable little home, right up till 8 o'clock at night. Well, what happens then? Then you move out. Why? The tide comes in. <laughs> And where do we move to? Into the other house. Oh, I see. The other house. The what one we've house? had built on the cliff top. Oh, that old thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was it building that one? Mine. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Yes, you're the man who owns the building company, aren't you? <laughs> right? Mind you, I'm only doing it for your own good. Oh, of course. I mean, you don't want to stay in that one on the beach all night and drown, do you? No, of course not. Well, then, you've got to have another one built on the cliff top, haven't you? Yes, I suppose we have. Well, shall up, then. <laughs> Just a minute. I, I can't afford to buy two lots of furniture. You don't have to. You take it with you when you go. <laughs> now, look. You start moving the furniture at four o'clock in the afternoon. Then when the tide comes in at eight o'clock, you just have time to nip back down and lock all the doors. Why? To stop the sea getting in. <laughs> well, then, if the sea can't get in, why can't I stay down there? What, and leave all the furniture out on the cliff top all night? <laughs> yes, I... I hadn't thought of that. Now, look, just a minute. Why can't we just build one house on the clifftop? Well, you can do. But then, where are you going to live during the day? Where are we going to live during the day? <laughs> well, it's obvious. We, we just... He's right, you know. <laughs> He's right. We've got nowhere to live during the day. Homeless. Up in the moors, waiting for night to come so we can go home. He's dead right. <laughs> Tony, don't be so silly. He's not right. I know plenty of people who manage perfectly well with one house. We'll build it on the cliff top. We don't want the one down on the beach. Don't want it. I've paid 7,000 quid for that house. <laughs> I'm not knocking it down for you or anybody. It's not built yet. That's no excuse. <laughs> It's my home. Just because you don't like it, I'm supposed to knock it down and have nowhere to live during the day. You can live in the one on the clifftop all the time. Then who's going to live in the one down on the beach? Nobody! You expect me to leave it down there empty after all the money I've paid for it? Look, I'm a, I'm a bit confused. You're Do you not mind... alone. <laughs> Do you mind explaining, once again, very slowly, just why you need two houses? I give up. I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> Tell them, Sid. Sid, tell them. They're a bit slow, you know. You know, they're not as bright as me. Well, it's quite simple. You've got one house on the cliff top. Yes, and all got... right, all right. We won't go through all that again. Take it from me, Tony. You are being <laughs> twisted. How can you say such a thing about the man who's just saved my life? Huh? Saved my life. If it hadn't been for Sid's foresight, I might have been drowned in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're having two houses built, and that is that. Good. Now, there's just one point about the house on the cliff top. If the weather gets rough and the sea undermines the bottom of the cliff... The house might collapse. Oh, dear. But you've got nothing to worry about. I'm going to take precautions. Good lad, Sid. My pal. I'm going to build you another house two miles inland. <laughs> yes, of course. No point in taking chances. But Tony... But the man saved me life again. <laughs> so now we've got three houses. One underwater twice a day, one liable to collapse any minute, and there's nothing wrong with the third one, is there? Not a thing. Perfectly good house. Then let's just settle for that one. Forget about the others, eh? Don't be ridiculous, Maura. The only reason we're building this one is because the other two aren't safe. <laughs> if you don't build them, there's no point in building this one. The reason's gone. Yours isn't doing so good either, is it? Right, then. Now, that's uh, three houses at 7,000 acres at a time. That's 24,000 acres. Uh, uh, uh. Wait a minute. Add it up again. 22,000. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Just watch it. <laughs> right, now, if you sign the deeds, we'll just... Just a minute, Sid. I've just thought. It's going to be a bit dodgy getting this furniture up from the beach every night. One feels such a Charlie climbing up a cliff in your pyjamas. And... <laughs> Grand piano and a couple of goldfish bowls strapped on your back. Well, of course you do. Which is why I've engaged the Sydney James Steel Construction Company Limited. And what do they build? Escalators. I thought they were. <laughs> How much? To you, 2,000 quid. I'll have two. One up, one down. <laughs> and I'll have a couple of dozen corset adverts to stick up along the side. <laughs> right, well, that's settled. Just one other thing. When the house on the cliff top falls down, which it will do... Naturally. Of course... How do we get the furniture over to the house that's two miles inland? Don't worry about that. I bet Sid's thought of something. Yeah. I have. I knew he had. How much? Five thousand quid. Payable to the SJEC. SJEC? The Sydney James Engineering Company. And what do they build? Railways. So now we've got... A... <laughs> so now we've got our own railway. I want to ride! <laughs> All right, now. If you just sign here, we can get started. Right. Now, well, go on. What are you waiting for? Just thinking about that sentry box. If I was nine inches taller, I could be living rent-free. <laughs> sign it. All right. Anthony A. Sinjin Hancock, second. There. Now, how much do we owe him, Bill? Uh, let's see. Twelve acres of land at 2,000 an acre. Oh, that's... Uh, plus three houses at 7,000. Uh, two escalators, railway lines, two stations, engine, four coaches and a guards van. That's two and two, carry three, makes 144,000 pounds. Mara, bring up the bank, ask for a loan. But uh, you haven't got an account. Here's a bob, go and open one. <laughs> Well, there we are. We'll start construction first thing tomorrow morning. And good luck. Isn't it marvellous? I only came here to see about a little bungalow. <laughs> Never mind, Tony. I don't care what anybody else says about you. To me, you'll always be... Yes? A complete idiot. <laughs> Thank you, Maura. My word, they are getting on with it, aren't they? There's no doubt about it. You can't beat the British workmen. Look at them going it. That's the third brick they've got into position in the last hour and a half. <laughs> They'll never keep it up. Hey, hey, look out, Tub. Mind that crane. Don't walk underneath it. Oh, my word, yes, a big one, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Foreman. That's all right, mate. All right, Charlie. Lift the way. Gently. Jenny, don't drop me, don't drop me. Right, that's it, that's it. Hold it, hold it. Now, slowly down, slowly, slowly. Hold a bit. Slowly down, that's it, lovely. Another six inches, down. Slowly now. Slow, that's it. Perfect. Let it go, Charlie. Now you know why they only lay three bricks in an hour and a half. Surely they can work faster than this. I've got a good mind to complain to the foreman. Don't do that. They'll all go on strike. Nobody oh. would notice. Oh, now, be fair, Moira. Some of them are doing their bit. Look at that little bloke over there. <laughs> They've had him on a gold day. Uh, never stops, poor little devil, mixing away there. Look at him, shoveling it in there. What's he making? Tea. <laughs> Where did Sid get him from? I don't know, but it's the first time I've ever seen overalls with arrows on them. <laughs> hey, look at that carpenter there. He doesn't know what he's going to do for a start. Talk about wasting wood. Every half hour, I have to go over and dig him out of the sawdust. It's all your fault, Tony, agreeing to pay them time and a half for overtime and double time on Sundays. Well, what about it? Well, now they only come in at half past five and only on Sunday mornings. <laughs> That's not good enough, Tub. I've seen some lazy workmen in my time, but shovels with built-in arm rests, I ask you. <laughs> And another thing, Tony, I'd like to know where Sid's getting all these bricks from. I can tell you that. You know he bought half a dozen rowing boats last week. Well? You know that lighthouse over there? Lighthouse? Where? Exactly. <laughs> I wish they'd get a move on. We could build it quicker ourselves. We'll probably have to. Look, the carpenter just switched the lights on. What happened? The electricians have come out. <laughs> Hello? There go the bricklayers. That's all they needed. Mark my words, half the country will be paralyzed before the night out. <laughs> Oh, well, let's get to work. There's some hard graft ahead of us. This house must be finished. We've all got to put our backs into it. No shucking. Bill, you can lay the bricks. Mara, 
If you're a strong girl, you can dig the trenches. And what, pray, are you going to do? You'll both be needing tea, won't you? about those workmen, Billy. Lucky they got those first two houses built before they went on strike. Well, they should have come out and strike before they built them. Why? Something happened? Well, no, except that the one on the cliff top is now where the one on the beach was, and the one on the beach... Yeah? That was sunk last night. <laughs> but don't worry, we're managing all right in our own with the third one. So I see. I like these new style temporary buildings. Contemporary. Not the way you're doing it, son. <laughs> What's wrong with the way we're doing it? I'm very proud of myself. I built a complete wall today. Yeah, and at about time you stopped, it's 220 yards long. I know, I have the same trouble when I'm knitting. I just can't seem to turn the heel. Oh, I must admit, Billy, it's coming along nicely. I like that big bay window over there, very nice. It's not supposed to be there. Tony leaned up against the wall before the cement was dry. Have you seen inside yet, Mr. James? No, where's the front door? Well, it should be here somewhere. I... Oh, there it is up there. Oh, Bill. Well, how was I to know that the plans were upside down? Well, I would have thought you might have suspected. I mean, it's not normal to have a television aerial in the coal cellar, is it? I don't know. I've been around, but I've never seen a house with a flat roof with pointed foundations before. Never mind. It'll confuse the flies. That reminds me. Where's Hancock got to? There he is, chatting to your foreman over there. Of course, this is the first time I've been on the building, though. I didn't think it was. That's right. <laughs> well, you can tell by the expert way I sliced these bricks in half of me trowel, can't you? Yes, it's very, very clever, very clever. Mind you, my fingers aren't as long as they used to be. <laughs> well, they <no. laughs> does happen. Still, we all make mistakes. Yes, of course. I come from a long line of builders, me, but you know. Do you? My great-grandfather helped to build the Tower Bridge. No. Yes, he was the bloke who sorted it now. Was he? <laughs> Then there's the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Your family built that? Every stone. Good. Yeah, I did. My Uncle Fred designed it. Well, well, well. I, I, I say he designed it. I tell a lie. That isn't exactly true. No? It was, uh, it was a rough sketch of my mother's wedding cake. <laughs> the Italians liked it, so we put it up. So tell me, uh, does it really lean? Ah, oh, no, well, strictly speaking, no. No? Between you and me, it's dead straight. Is it? Yeah. Depends how you're standing, of course. Yes. <laughs> It's the way they hold the cameras. That, well, that's what does it, you know. That's what, yes. That's what anyway, my biggest job, that's the one I was going to tell you about. Yes, yes. Just a minute. <laughs> Undoubtedly, it was the, was the fourth bridge. Oh, uh, yes. That's right, yes, it, yes. it was the fourth bridge. It was. I remember distinctly because the other three fell in. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> yes. Anyway, I was in charge. I decided we'd start building from both sides and meet in the middle. Follow me? Good idea. A good yeah, idea. You're ahead of me. Yes. I can see. You're intelligent. Yes. <laughs> Because you know the fourth bridge. Uh, it's got, it's, it, you know, it's got, got those big arches that go up and down, up and down, all oh, the way across. Oh, yes, yes, I know the one, yes. How those trains ever get up and down those things? Still, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so that's their worry. I was only building that's it. That's right, yes, I remember. So anyway, there we were. We started from either side. Uh -huh. We had a race to see who could get to the middle first. Oh, competition. Well, it's a good thing. Yes, I think is. so. I'm, I'm all for competition myself. Yeah, Backs things up, doesn't it? Fun? Backs things up. You're overdoing it a bit, aren't you? <laughs> Well, oh, so. anyway, we were going along like a house. On fire. On fire. You should have put that in. <laughs> we built the first 27 yards in three seconds. No. Well, we had to. There was a train behind us. <laughs> well, we were doing very well. Right up until the fog sprang up. Oh, dear. Well, I don't know how it happened. The long and the short of it was... Yeah? We passed each other. <laughs> well, I felt the right Toby jug, I can tell you. Well, you <laughs> there was the other half of the bridge. Twenty yards past me and six feet on one side. Well, I blamed it on the crane driver. Yeah? Oh, the bloke who was lifting the big girders about. It's your fault, I said. I was annoyed. Well, naturally. Puce, I was. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the old face was red with anger. Well, he said puce. I clicked. Well, I did. <laughs> I've got a right to change my mind, haven't I? Yes, of course. Thank time. you very much. Carry on. Just, just keep chipping in. Don't try and dominate. <laughs> well, as I said, my old face was red with anger. Yeah. I clenched my fist till the muscles on my arms stood out like marbles. Yeah. <laughs> 
I look over at him, I shook my fist. It's your fault, I said. You went looking where you were going, I said. Undo all that lot, I said, and go back and start again, I said. It was me speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know whether it was the authority of my voice or the sense of shame he must have felt, but he did it without a murmur. Did I should have said he'd done it without a murmur. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Grammatical doesn't matter. mistake. We can all go wrong. Yes. <laughs> he could see I meant it. He started his crane up and got going. Of course, he was eager to rectify his mistakes, see? Yes, of course. There he was. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. Yeah. Just if it was today. Yeah. Swinging his huge crane around like a toy, dead keen. Was it? Yeah. And you know, he, he had a sort of sheepish, apologetic smile on his face. Oh, no, no, yeah. Just as I walked away, having, having won my point, yeah. being the foreman, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what he did? What? He dropped a ten-ton girder on my head. <laughs> Come quickly, we've finished the house. Oh, third time lucky. Wonderful. My own little house at last. One day it'll be our home, Maura. That wonderful golden day when you shyly carry me over the threshold. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Well, it's that. Well, it's, uh, it's right behind. Well, it was there a minute ago. <laughs> Mr. James? Yes? Mr. James, have you seen the house anywhere? Well, I tried, Maura. I slung a rope round it, but I couldn't save it. Gentlemen, remove your hats, please. You can just see the television area going under now. Going under? I want to congratulate you, Hancock. You're a pioneer. The first man to unsuccessfully build a house on Romney Marsh. Well done. Well done. Romney Marsh? Dig it out. Me money. Ruined. Nowhere to live. You must find me a place to live. Don't, Don't you understand? Done. Don't worry, son. For a thousand square, I can tell you... Here is the news. Last night, a sentry box was stolen from outside Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Will the thieves kindly return the sentry? <laughs> and if anybody can give any information, please communicate with Scotland Yard. <laughs> we'll be listening to Hancock's 